Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My talk is entitled Incorporating Technology in Teaching and Learning in the Caribbean Tertiary Classroom. My name is Farian Mohan. I'm a senior instructor at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. My research is based on helping a 21st century instructor adapt to his 21st century students. Anyone can get access to a computer and go into Google and you're very, very quickly you can gather more information that is required. Hence, the 21st century instructor must find some other way of assessing or giving assignments since very little time is spent by students in obtaining information. We are going to look at the Caribbean at 20 years ago, before technology was readily available. 20 years ago, I was a student at the University of the West Indies and I was taught computer science programming in a classroom. I had restricted amount of access to a computer because of a large number of students and very little computer access or computers available for us. Now, in order to understand computing or programming to be more specific, you must have assessment or assignment so that you can test what has been taught by writing programs. Today in the Caribbean, all computer classes are taught using a lab, either entirely or have labs specifically allocated for students to learn and practice what is being taught in the classroom. In addition to this, a lot of students have personal computers, access to computers so that they can learn or practice their what is taught in the classroom at their convenient time. So what we have, what this research is based upon is something Jones said in 1995 that states, that a learner must develop an intelligent partnership with the technology they use. Why is this important? Because students who are born in the technological age have been totally surrounded by technology. Everything that they have access to using or to spending recreation time involves some form of technology. So when we want to incorporate technology in teaching now, what you find, according to Ford in 2003, is that when we incorporate technology in our teaching, we are now we have now have created opportunities for students to cheat, since they have very easy access for information. So what does that lead us to? We have students who are technological, and we have the workforce in the 21st century, which would like all these students to be students who can collaborate, and students who can understand and use technology which is readily available. So then what does it require of a 21st century instructor? The 21st century instructor must spend more emphasis on analysis and thinking. We must stimulate the student to think more and analyze more since very little time is required for students to obtain information. Given we have students who have access to internet, we have students who have access to family and friends. I have students who can place an assignment on a forum and get ready answers. I have students who can also share assignments or who can copy assignments. What does that leave me? My research idea is based on, can the 21st century student who has the knowledge so easily accessible still be able to be given assignment considering the above? What we have to do now is look at the 21st century learner. The 21st century learner must, as I stated above, must spend more time focusing on analyzing knowledge and less time on retention. So the 21st century instructor must be able to stimulate critical thinking. How can they stimulate critical thinking? They must take knowledge and incorporate it in the real world so that the student could be able to relate that knowledge into what they are see around them or what they can see in places where they go. My research is saying, I'm going to encourage the student to be ready for the 21st century. I'm going to let them cooperate, collaborate, use technology. But not only am I going to do that, I'm going to open them, tell them, go and copy, go and cheat, go and put it in the form, show everybody out there how easy you can get assignment to, to be done. Right? Make sure you have that assignment correct. Why restrict them? I have one constraint, is that whatever you submit for me, that must be something that you understand. So as long as you understand it, the mark is yours. 
But of course, that is easier said than done. Understanding what you submit. How do I test that a student understand? The sample that I used was an object-oriented programming first-year course, which is a programming course which relies heavily on assignments. Object-oriented because it's a much more difficult course than traditional functional programming. And it was the first-year students of the University of Trinidad and Tobago. One sample was a full-time class of 22 students, and of the same year, the part-time class of six students. So these were the samples that was used. Now, how did I implement that idea of being able to try to determine as close of, as possible if a student understood what they were submitting as assignments? When assignment was due, all the students had to submit. There were no late assignments. And the day the assignment is due, a small quiz, 15 to 20 minutes, no more, was given based on the assignment. Some aspect of the assignment. It may not be the exact assignment, it could be something very similar, but it must be pertaining to what the assignment involves you. And so doing, a student now, who got a mark of 90 in the assignment, could actually walk away with a mark of 56. How is that done? Whatever mark the student got on a quiz is rounded up to the greater 10. So if you got 73, you got 80. If you got 79, you got 80. So I gave them the benefit of a doubt of having written, it's a little more strenuous. Now that is said, whatever you get in your quiz mark, so this student got 50%, so his overall mark quarter was based on the mark on the assignment itself, and the remaining 75 was based upon the quiz mark being incorporated in that. So therefore, students, as I said, had 90%, will now walk away with 56%. Now this being the case, we really have the student to realize that this is no nonsense, because if you want the mark, you're gonna have to work the mark. The only thing I'm asking is try to understand what it is you're submitting, right? And analyzing the data, I have compared the final mark, that's the final written exam mark, not the overall mark. So the final written exam mark against the assessment mark during the term. And what it leads one to see is that it looks like there is some, some relationship between the two. In the full-time class of 22 students, you can, you can also see it indicates or highlights they are relationship or it looks like it's signaling that there is relationship between the final written exam and the assessment mark during the term. So what is, let's look at it a little more closely. Out of the 20 students in the full-time class, seven of those students got higher assessment marks than final mark, two of which failed the course. Six students failed the course overall. Those, all six students who failed the course overall also failed the final exam and also failed the assessment mark. Looking at the part-time students, we observe a similar pattern. Three of the six students had a higher assessment mark than the final mark, one of whom failed the course overall. Three students failed the course overall, and all the students who failed the course overall failed the final mark as well as failed the assessment mark. So what does this tell us? It appears that from this study so far, everyone who failed the course also failed the assessment. So this leads one to think that maybe there is some connection and that I can determine before the end of the course who are the weak students and help them before they reach the end of the course. So in conclusion, what we are seeing from this research is that we have the 21st century instructor must provide or must try to have a more accurate way of assessing the student during the semester so that we can avoid them from having a problem trail right through the course. We must enrich our learning experience for the students by incorporating technology. We must provide opportunities for students to focus more on understanding and analyzing, and very little on retention or gathering of information. And we must definitely promote collaboration so that the student is ready for the industry. What were our problems? Our problems were not all students had access to personal computers, and students definitely need to develop the skill of thinking, or more specifically, critical thinking. The further, what is the further, or where am I going with this research? We would like to do some more test beds, and we'll also like to check and see, in clo looking closely at the assessment, the topics that was given in the assessment and the, top, the same topics in the final exam, is there a relationship in terms of topic by topic? And also, for those students who have been tech failing in the assessment, let's try and help them before the end of the term and determine if we can help these students pass 
at the end of the term in the final written exam.